Mr. Luis Carlos Corredor. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, I want to thank, first of all, the MPOC for inviting me here and for you guys for being here, uh, listening to me. Uh, it's quite an honor for me to be standing up here sharing my ideas, uh, so thank you very much. Um, my name is Luis Carlos Corridor and I work for Thin Oil Products. Uh, we are a company that's based in Western Florida. It's uh, near Miami in the United States. And today I'm going to be giving you guys an update on palm oil consumption in the United States. So um, before I begin, I just want to kind of give a quick introduction about who we are. Um, so as, as it was introduced, um, the Corridor family, actually my, my grandfather started growing oil palms in uh, the year 1970 in the southwest region of Colombia uh, called Tumaco. Um, we, by the late 1900s, we had, uh, we had grown to 3,200 hectares of, of palms, and we had two extraction mills to, to process CPO and PKO. Um, today, we still have those two, those two mills and the, and the plantations, so we're producers of, of CPO and PKO, uh, but our main business, Tinola Products, is an international supplier of crude Latin American palm oil. Um, basically what we do is that we, we aggregate palm oil from all over Latin America, from Central America and from South America, and we export it to Europe. Um, and with that, we have more than 40 years of experience in the vegetable oil industry, uh, specifically with palm. So today I came to talk about an update on palm oil consumption in the United States. And to do that, I wanna talk about four main topics. Uh, number one is what has been the consumption in the past in the US. Number two is what does the consumption look like going forward from here. Uh, number three is what can we do to continue or increase this trend. And then I'll talk about some regulations that have, uh, that have impacted this trend in the, in the couple, uh, in the recent years. So to start off, uh, we'll talk about consumption in the past. Uh, here you can, you can see a graph over the past 50 years or so of the palm oil consumption. Um, you can see from 1965 all the way to maybe 2002, uh, pretty low and pretty steady in the 250,000 ton range for palm oil. But in 2002, something happened that um, really led to an increase of, of palm consumption in the US, and I'll be talking about that in a little bit. Um, well, 2002, we had 250,000 tons, and then uh, last year, in 2017, uh, it closed at around 1.7 million tons, uh, so almost tenfold, uh, so quite a big increase. Uh, here's the, the last 10 years, so again, you can see uh, doubling the, the consumption in the past 10 years, um, and really, the only thing that I want to show here is that, uh, well, actually, the source of information shows that in 2018, uh, the consumption is going to decrease, um, but personally, I, I don't think that's true, and that's because um, here I can see you can see the data for comparing this year to last year. Uh, in 20, we have we have the, the graph in red uh, for 2018 and the graph in, in green for 2017, um, month by month of the consumption, and you can see that 2018 has been quite higher than 2017. So far, I only have data up to July. Um, so actually, in up to July in 2017, there were 665,000 metric tons. Um, in 2017 and in 2018, we had 876,000, so 200,000 tons higher this year up to July. And really, there's no uh, indication that it's going to decrease in these next couple months. Uh, so at this rate, consumption can reach up to 1.9 million tons in 2018 but the estimates show that it's only gonna be 1.6 million. Uh, that's, a, I guess, a personal opinion. I, I think it's going to be higher this year. Um, okay, so then looking forward to, to how it's going to be in, in the next uh, couple of years, I wanna, I wanna show uh, US population, because obviously uh, the demand is, is driven by, US, by the population, really. Um, and so you can see that for the past 70 years here, uh, you can see that it's a pretty in pretty steady increase of, uh, of the population. Today, in 2018, we are at maybe 325 million, and it's projected to continue to increase pretty steadily until 2100. Um, 
today, 325 million, and then uh, by 2100, we should be at 450 million, according to uh, uh, this source. So that's a 38% increase of, of the US population. And to put the consumption and the population kind of together, I've calculated what the consumption per capita has been in the US uh, year by year. Um, and you can see that uh, pretty low consumption per capita up to, again, 2002, where the consumption really started to increase. Um, and, and what this, this is a good sign in the US because uh, obviously, you know, growing population and you have a growing consumption per capita, so you, uh, we're gonna have a lot more demand for palm oil in these next couple of years. Uh, also, as, as the economy increases, more people will tend to change their, their diet uh, to more uh, oils and fats. Their, their percent of the calories in their diet will come more from oils and fats instead of uh, something like carbs or something like that. So increasing population, increasing economy will increase uh, oil demand and, and palm oil demand. Okay, uh, so here I want to I want to kind of take you through, through some math that I've done to calculate how much what the potential is in the United States uh, for palm oil consumption. Um, so so the U.S. consumes per per person per capita um, an an intake of thirty or thirty six hundred calories per day. This was in twenty fourteen, but I think actually this year it's probably a little bit higher than that. Um, we know that one gram of palm oil or oil has nine calories. And then according to the uh, American Heart Association, 30% of your total calories should come from oils and fats. And, um, and we can assume that 30% of these oils and fats could come from palm oil, uh, as we can see it uh, globally. So if you do some math and you, you know, multiply and divide these out, uh, you get that in 2018 with a population of 325 million, we could have potentially 4.3 million tons of palm oil consumed in the US. Uh, in 2050, almost five million tons, and in 2100, six million tons. Uh, but in reality, we only had, you know, one, or I guess this year we were gonna, we're gonna have 1.6 to 1.9 million tons. Uh, so this tells us that there's, there is room for growth in the, in the US for, for palm oil consumption. The next thing is, I wanna show a chart of the top 20 consuming countries of palm oil in, in, in the world. Um, they're ranked by, by how much they consume by year. And you can see that the United States is ranked number nine, but per capita, it's, it's very low. It's one of the lowest. It has 4.8 kilograms per, per person um, per year, where the average is 18.7. And you can see here, you have countries that have way higher numbers. Uh, so you can, again, you can, you can definitely increase that number um, and, and we have a lot of room for growth. Okay, so how do we fulfill that potential? Uh, number one is marketing. Uh, that's, you know, it plays a really big role and I'm, and I'm gonna show an example that, that shows that. Uh, research and development, finding new applications for, for Palm can really increase our, our consumption. Um, there's, the, there's a challenge in the US that, you know, you have, and maybe this is around the whole world, but you have talk shows and you have uh, news stations talking about oils and fats and, and really they, they have zero agricultural or, or uh, nutrition or science background but they, they're the ones that are talking about this and they're the ones that have the resonance with the consumers um, instead of the well-educated scientists and the PhDs that study this every single day uh, so that's that's a that's a big problem uh, there's too much information that's, that's just wrong going out going around social media we all know this um, and so and, and they have, that has a change so the example that I was talking about earlier um, for marketing is, is I, w I was at a conference not too long ago and, and there was a woman that was showing a, um, a study that she had done where she would go around the street and, out and she would ask people what their perception of different oils was. And one of the questions that she would ask was, what do you think about saturated fat? And most people agreed that saturated fat was bad for the health. But then her next question was, what do you think about coconut oil? And, uh, and then their perception was that coconut oil was really good for the health. And we all know here that coconut is very saturated, so these two statements really contradict each other. Um, and, and it doesn't make much sense, but that's, that's the role that marketing plays. Um, you know, people don't really know, but in the US there's been a huge marketing campaign towards coconut oil. Um, so we need to help from everyone in the industry to, to kind of get the information out there. I mean, this is everything I mean, I know that there's a lot of efforts going into this already, 
uh, you know, get more information out there to better educate people with facts and you know, not, not just opinions. Um, to the NGOs in Europe, uh, you know, the world can't survive without palm oil. So it's not about banning palm oil, it's not about uh, you know, building walls, it's about finding solutions, finding sustainable solutions to, to, to fix the issues that we have today. So building bridges and not walls. Uh, again, promoting sustainable palm oil. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to talk about is um, is, is some regulations that have affected the consumption of the of the consumption of palm oil in the U.S. Uh, and that's that's trans fats. So trans fats um, are are made by partially hydrogenating partially hydrogenating vegetable oils. In the U.S., we have a lot of soy, um, and so people would partially hydrogenate soy to get uh, palm-like properties, like uh, you know shelf stability and creamy texture. But the problem with partially hydrogenating vegetable oils is that they create trans fats, and trans fats uh, raise our bad cholesterol levels and they lower good cholesterol levels, and they're associated with heart disease and stroke and type 2 diabetes. Uh, the World Health Organization estimates that uh, trans fats actually lead 500,000 deaths of cardiovascular disease per year. So what's happening is that there's 3.6 million tons of partially hydrogenated oils that were once consumed every year that are now being replaced by other oils, palm oil being, being one of them. Uh, here's a quick timeline of, of the whole trans fat ban in the US. So uh, it started kind of becoming a, a big thing in 1999. Uh, the FDA started uh, proposing mandatory labeling of trans fats. Then in 26, 2006, they required the industry to declare the amount of trans fats on their labels. 2015, trans fats were, uh, they became, they took them off the list of the generally recognized as safe or grass. And then they, they announced that by 2018, June of 2018, it was gonna be prohibited for food manufacturers to make food with trans fats. Uh, so that's already in effect. But uh, it doesn't end there because in 20, they're, they're giving the companies until 2020 for their inventories to flow through uh, the supply chain and the distribution. Uh, so uh, really, and then 2023, they want to ban trans fat from, from the global food supply. Uh, so really, this means that uh, the increase that we've seen from 2002 to now, it doesn't really end in 2018. There's still some, some, some room for, for growth. Um, so, and then, yeah, like I've said, the, the partially hydrogenated vegetable oil uh, ban has already been linked to a boom in palm oil consumption in the US. So in conclusion, uh, various factors indicate a growth of palm oil consumption in the US. Uh, I didn't want to talk too much about sustainability because it's a huge topic, but everything that's being consumed in the US is, is sustainable. Um, using correct information to, to educate people, super important, and marketing. And then last but not least, uh, estimates show that there's gonna be an increase of demand of 250,000 tons uh, per year for maybe the next five or 10 years. And with that, I wanna say thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Luis Carlos Corridor.